What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is your host, Clay Swackhammer, back at you with another episode of Annotated Codes. Today, I would like to talk about some functions deployed into Excel from MATLAB for the purpose of accelerating GCFID, or gas chromatography with flame ionization detection analysis. Now, right off the bat, I want to say that uh, these might be convenient. Um, I haven't exactly talk to the chemists and food scientists yet, but if you do end up using something like this, always check your work. Um, maybe this could even be the way to check your work um, from a by-hand analysis. I wouldn't want this to replace a good workflow, um, but you know, these things are kind of fun, so let's get started. Now, um, right here in this workbook, we have some data that we might see after a gas chromatography experiment. This is something that uh, Zhi Chao Zhang and I collected in April of 2018. Okay, so we have uh, standards, standard A and B, which are two separate solutions injected into the instrument, and they contain different compounds, which have peaks with uh, some retention time and some area. Now, the files, after extracting them, look something like this. They have a large header file that shows a lot of uh, information for you, and then they have um, a peak number, uh, the peak's retention time and its area, and then the instrument or the software is going to make a guess about which compound that is, but this might not always be trustworthy. We definitely want to check it. So um, it's relatively easy to grab the times and the areas, and that's what we'll do. And that was for standard A. We'll put that right here. Next, we may have, uh, okay, let's see. So we'll grab the one for standard B, too. Um, see if I get those times and areas, and uh, they should fit right here. So you may wonder, how do I know that standard A's compounds come out in this order? Um, well, I actually don't. I haven't talked to the professors yet, but I think that's correct because of this document, which shows standard A being made uh, as such. So I think that even though these retention times may change a little bit because of the experimental parameters, I expect them to always elute in this order. So standard A being right there, and then uh, standard B being right here. So I just copied these codes and put them into Excel, and that's what we see over here on the left, uh, 8, 11, 13, 0, so on and so forth. Um, so if we're getting peaks in that order, I expect that these peaks represent those compounds, um, especially in the case that we got those peaks and only those peaks and the numbers seem to work. Uh, so um, maybe we'll have to double check that that workflow, but I think that this block right here is relatively easy to get. Now, this part is also relatively easy to get, at least from the uh, uh, analysis that the instrument software will, will do for you. Um, so I just have a couple of them here. Oh, excuse me. I have one of them here. This is a single injection of an experiment from an experiment, some lipid extraction that we did, and it's the same thing. We get some times and areas. So once again, we'll copy that um, and uh, put it well, I already put them here to make this video go a little faster. But you see how um, the retention times, I'm going to get a little more precision out of Excel right here. Um, we're just copy-pasting, right? So we took the retention time of each peak, and then we took its area and put it in there. Now we have six samples here, three that use direct acid method and three that use the Fulch method. Okay, so now we really, what we want to do next, this is what I thought seemed like the, the difficult part, is match them. So we want to say, all right, well, this peak has a certain retention time. Which one does it correspond to here? And you can do this visually, and you probably should. I'm not advocating that you give up the, the by-hand method for this analysis for some kind of automated approach. But it does take a long time, and you could make a mistake. So maybe it's nice to have a tool um, that would allow you to check your work or, or do it quickly and for a quick analysis or something like that. So anyway, we have that data for all six of these samples. Now what we really want to do is generate a table that has all of this information. And then for each one of these experimental samples, it should have the retention time and the area of a peak uh, matched to uh, the closest peak over here. Um, so that function in Excel is going to be called RT sort for retention time sort. And it takes two inputs or two arguments. The first one is the table with the data of the standards. So you can grab it like so. And the next input it takes is this whole thing. It takes this all in one big chunk. And that uh, format is a little bit precise. So these might uh, 
not all of these experimental samples might not have the same amount of compounds present in them, of course, and so there can be empty cells in here. That's fine, but it needs to have this double header where it shows the sample name, a blank space, the next sample name, a blank space, and then the RT and area um, for each of these things. Uh, but once again, I think this table is actually easy to generate. It's just a little bit difficult to go ahead and match. So there is a third input or a third argument, and that is a peak area threshold. Um, if you want it to effectively not uh, get rid of any peaks, if you want to analyze every single peak here, you can just set this value arbitrarily high, and then it will analyze everything uh, to be precise. How high? Higher than the highest peak here, basically. Um, uh, then it'll, oh, excuse me. Um, I take it back, folks. You would set that value arbitrarily low. Uh, you could basically set it to zero, and it'll, it should work. It will just analyze all of these peaks. Um, but for now, let's get rid of any peak um, with area less than 10,000. Um, this will basically get rid of some of these very minor compounds, um, and maybe that's okay, depending on your analysis. Um, you can always run through it and do a test. So those are our three inputs to RT sort. Now you'll get a pop-up window after that function has executed. Um, it's going to be styled as a MATLAB figure. Now in this thing you can scroll. This is the output. Um, if you hit Control A you can highlight the whole thing. Control C will copy it. And then you can put it down here. Now this function will re-execute every time the worksheet refreshes. So I like to delete it after I'm done using it. Um, but anyway, now what we have is the standard uh, table. So this is just repeated back to us. And we also have sample A1 and then area. Okay, so this is actually sample A1 retention time and then area, retention time and then area, retention time and then area, so on and so forth. And it's identified these major components. So right here it's telling us that the major components in this sample are C16-0, C17, which is the internal standard, C18-1, or oleic acid, and C18-2. Uh, or LA, but the issue here is that it's said that this is all trans or oleic acid. That's probably not, right? Um, at least we expect it to be cis oleic acid, being as this is a, a plant sample, if my understanding is correct. However, um, the reason it's put it in that column is simply because the peaks are closer to the elution time of the trans oleic acid than they are to the cis oleic acid. Um, but if you check those retention times, uh, they're very close, 16.838, 16.840, those are pretty darn close. So for this case, we'll ignore that. We can always rename this later or whatever, and you can delete rows at any point here. I think we should be okay. Now, the next thing that we might want to do in this workflow is figure out what's the concentration, right? So we've sorted this thing, and now we might ask ourselves, all right, so we have this retention time in this area of this compound. Now, what is the concentration of each fatty acid in each sample per original sample mass? So let's say we have these sample masses right here. Um, and these should be in milligrams. Um, so there are 10.6, 11.2, 5, so on and so forth, milligrams. Now there's another function for that. Um, now there are some reasons why you might actually want to stop here and do the rest of the analysis by hand. Also for so few compounds in this sample, um, this may seem like kind of a trivial application of this function, and perhaps it is, but it could become handy if we wanted to do batches of things or analyze things with more compounds. Um, so next, let's look at Fa conch for fatty acid concentration. So this picks two arguments, and the first one is nothing but the previous table we've just gener generated, the whole thing. Um, so we're going to take that argument, and then we're also going to pass it the original sample masses as this row vector, and that's it. Uh, we'll close those parentheses up, and we'll get a new table. This is nothing but the fatty acid concentration in each of those samples. Okay, so we're looking at a very small amount of this, and uh, some internal standards, relatively consistent across the board, and then the highest concentration of oleic acid, which is what we expect for almonds, and uh, I think this is pretty close to being in line with the literature, being as the almonds are about 50% lipid by mass, and right here we're saying we have about 40% oleic acid, and then around 10% LA. Uh, that seems pretty reasonable to me, but once again I'll ask uh, 
somebody with more knowledge of the chemistry and we'll, we'll see if that seems to be in line with the literature. Now, uh, let's see, is there anything else to mention about this table? Uh, well, sure. Okay, so it's put it uh, in the trans oleic acid column. We don't actually think that it's trans oleic acid. I think it's cis oleic acid. Um, but why don't we actually just get rid of that, that standard? Um, and I want to try to rerun this and see if that will work. Um, and if not, I have a little bit of revising of the function to do. Um, this is the first time I've done this, folks. So um, bear with me if it, uh, if it doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, hopefully it does not let me down. OK, so we're just regenerating the standard table uh, after excising the translaic acid um, uh, column. So, OK, let me get rid of this whole business down here that we just generated, and I'll go through it a little bit more quickly. All right, so remember it's RT sort. Um, we're going to put in the standards now sans trans oleic acid, and we'll put in the data, and then we'll generate our threshold as before. OK, this is good. Now let's see if it actually put it in the cis oleic acid column. Aha, and it seems to have done so. Now let's just double check the downstream function, FA concentration or FA conch, and grab that whole thing. And now we will navigate up here and grab their sample masses. And voila, there you have it. Here's as though we have uh, generated the concentrations as before. It's taking the same peaks, um, but now without the trans oleic acid standard in there, it's going to put it with the cis oleic acid. The way this algorithm works is it's going to match the retention times of all of the peaks in each of these samples to the closest uh, peak in the standard. Now, there can be some problems with this, as you might anticipate. Not every peak in every standard will be the closest of our, excuse me, not every peak in every sample will necessarily be the closest peak of all peaks in that sample to any one peak from the standards. That can happen when you have the situation of a peak and then another peak, oh, I should have done it this way, you have a peak, oh, all right, never mind, you have uh, a peak and then you have another peak in the sample and another peak and let's just say for the sake of the argument that the closest standards are here and here. So this guy is closest to here, this guy's closest to here, this guy's kind of left out in the open, and that's a situation where it'll get rid of that peak. Now, the best way that I've found in my very limited experience to remedy that problem is to get rid of very small peaks, which may be artifacts or, or just kind of noisy peaks by setting that threshold a little bit higher, which for my purposes of analyzing bulk lipids and almonds might not be such a big deal, but of course, uh, buyer beware. All right, so I think that covers it, how to increase your productivity. Um, one more function from MATLAB. Um, oh, I have to close all of these figures just to uh, leave you out on something fun. Um, you can hit equals doge and call it on no arguments and pull up this funny dog who will tell you to uh, get back to work. <laughs> All right, so if, oh, but I should also talk about if you want to get these functions, um, basically I can help you with that. Um, that's going to be swackhammer at ucdavis.edu. Um, there's my email address. Uh, feel free to send me a message. I can send you the add-in files. You're basically going to have a single file. Um, it looks just like this. I'll get one for FA concentration. Uh, it's going to be a Microsoft Excel add-in, and you're just going to drag and drop it into your Excel workbook. And that's basically all you need to do to get started running these functions. Hopefully that helps you guys. Um, had a lot of fun making this video. Had a lot of fun making these functions, prototyping these algorithms. They're by no means perfect, but I think they could be useful in some situations. So uh, feel free to uh, get in touch with me if you want this software. And uh, this was your host, Clay Swackhammer, of another episode of Annotated Codes. Have a good one.